Since the last video, a lot of you guys asked me how you can create some kind of score for the game. So that's what we're going to be making today. It also gives us the chance to play around with some Unity UI. Exciting stuff, let's get started. So let's begin by getting a bit more organized. First off, let's create a folder for all of our scripts. Let's name it scripts. We'll place our follow player, player collision and player movement in there. Let's also make one for our materials. Again, we'll call this one materials and drag our obstacle mat and player mat in there. I think we can just leave the rest here. Let's then correct something that's been annoying me since the last video. And that is the collision detection. Sometimes it happens that our player actually passes through one of the obstacles. It's something that you guys have also noticed in the comments. To get more accurate physics detection we can select our obstacles and choose continuous under collision detection we'll do the same thing to our player we'll also go under edit project settings time and decrease our fixed time step i'll just set it to 0 0.01 this means that unity will more frequently update our physics and therefore the chance of missing a collision is reduced this also means that we'll probably have to select our player and increase the forward force a little bit i'll just set it to something like 8000 and i played around with it and found that a sideways force of about 100 and 20 felt pretty good. So now when we hit play, everything should look and feel pretty much the same way, but it just feels a lot nicer and the collisions are going to be much better. I'm also just going to fix my OCD by setting our player to a Y position of exactly one. All right, so let's get started with our UI piece. Creating UI in Unity is pretty much the same thing as creating anything else. We go to the hierarchy, we right click, we go under UI now, and we can select text. This creates a canvas. A canvas is a place to display all of our different UI elements and a text object, which of course allows us to configure our text. But we can't currently see it anywhere. To have a good look at it, let's switch to 2D mode. Let's select our text and hit F. Let's also zoom out a bit so we can see our entire canvas. Notice that the canvas will resize to fit the size of our game view. This is basically the screen that we can paint stuff on. For a text object here, I'm just going to move it up and put it kind of in the upper center. I'm also going to change our text alignment to center on both the horizontal and the vertical. You can also see that we can size up our text and if we hold down Alt, we will size from the center. However, it doesn't actually change the font size, it just changes the boundaries of our text. So in order to actually scale up our text, we'll have to increase the font size over here. Just make sure you make plenty of room for the text so that if your player reaches a really high score it's not going to clip. We can also set the horizontal overflow down here to overflow which means that if it should reach one of the boundaries it's just going to keep going. Something like this. Then let's change the text to something like 250 just to give ourselves an idea of what's going on. And I'm going to definitely also bump up the font size some more. Currently when we resize our window, say if we maximize it, our text is kind of parented to the center. So our text will always be a fixed distance from the center. This also means that it doesn't resize. And I kind of wanted to do that. So let's select our canvas and let's change the UI scale mode from constant pixel size, meaning that everything doesn't resize, to scale with screen size. And I wanted to kind of try and match the height. You can see now that if we maximize our game view, the font gets bigger as well. And I really like that. I'm also going to take the color of our text and make it completely white. I think that gives a pretty cool faded look. Finally, for the look of our text, I really, really hate Arial. It's kind of a passion. I mean, there's a lot of bad fonts out there, but please, anything but Arial. So I'm just going to go ahead and download another one. There are a lot of great font archives out there, Dev Font, Google Font, and so on. I'm just going to go and open my browser. I'm going to search for Roboto. This is a font made by Google, and it's really nice, modern, and simple. I'm just going to select this font, click down here, and we can now download it as a zip file. So I'm just going to unzip that file by hitting extract all and extract. And now you can just select all of the the different font versions and drag them directly into Unity. Voila! We'll also go ahead and create a separate folder for this called fonts and shift select all of them and drag them in there. And it's that easy. Now we can go under our text and change the font to whatever version of Roboto that we like. I'm just going to go with something like Roboto Thin. Actually, we might want to make the text black here just to make it more visible. So that kind of completes the look of our text, but it's still not updating. I mean, if we hit play, it's just going to be stuck at 250. And I want this to count up by the meter. You could also count up the score by time, but I think since this is about reaching as far as possible, it's pretty fun to measure distance. To do that, we go ahead and create a new script on our text object. I'm going to call it score and then create an ad. Let's double click it. 
And as always, we're just going to be removing the two using tags up there and the start method. So in order to keep track of how far we reach into a level, we need a reference to our player because our player has a position and we can use that to measure his distance traveled. It's the same as any other variable. We start with public, then the type. Here we could either write game object and this gives us a lot of information about our player, but we only want the position and therefore we're going to type transform instead because remember the transform component is responsible for position, rotation and scale. We're going to go ahead and write player as the name and now in our update loop we should be able to access player.position.z and this is how many units we've moved on the z axis. Of course we have to make sure that our player starts at a z of zero but indeed he does. So if we just want to display the position of our player here we can say debug.log and then insert player.position.z into the parentheses. Let's save this, go into unity, select our text object and drag in our player. If we then switch to the console and hit play we should get a bunch of debug.log messages constantly saying the updated position of our player on the z axis. Now all we need to do is transfer this value onto the UI element and that's really easy to do as well. Just like we needed a reference from our score to the player, we also need a reference from our score to the text. So again we'll go into unity and whenever we're dealing with UI elements we actually need to include some more functions. So we'll go up here and say that we're going to be using unity engine dot UI and this now allows us to write code for the user interface. We can then create another variable. This is also going to be public and it's going to be of type text. And this is of course because the name of the component that is responsible for text is text. And so we make it of type text and we can give this some fancy name. I'm just going to go with score text and close it with a semicolon. Then down here instead of debug.logging our position, we'll say score text and now we can access all of the different parts of our text. We can change the font size, we can change the color, and we can change the text itself. So score text.text allows us to change the text content. We can then set that equal to player.position. Z. However, if we try and run this, it is going to throw an error. And we can actually already see it if we hover over this red part. It says cannot implicitly convert type float to string. So what's happening? Well, our position on the Z axis is a float number. Remember float is one of the basic data types. And whenever we want to set our text equal to something, it requires a string. A string is also one of the fundamental data types and it's what we use to store text in. So we need to convert this number into text. To do that, we simply write dot at the end here and then to string. And we need to follow that with two parentheses. It's a bit weird that we have to do this. I mean, it's still going to be a number, but now it's it's going to be a number inside of a string. And that's the difference there. For now, just write after me. So if we save this, head back into Unity, we need to of course reference our score text. So we'll drag in our text component and hit play and we can now see the UI updating. However, it's doing so with a very high precision. And I think there's no reason for us to have decimal places in here, only whole numbers. To do that, we simply need to format our text. And the two string method actually allows us to do that really easily. All we need to do is go in here and in quotation marks, write a zero. If we save that now, go into Unity and hit play, we should see that it displays our distance in meters, but only in whole numbers. Much, much better. And we can see how cool that looks in full screen. If you think something about your text doesn't look super crisp, you can select the canvas and choose pixel perfect. This sometimes can make the UI render a lot sharper. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Also because of my traveling, I had to delay the monthly live stream a bit, but I will be live streaming very soon. Make sure to follow me at Facebook, facebook.com slash brackies, or over at Twitter at brackies tweet to get notified when that will happen. You don't want to miss it, it's always a lot of fun. Oh and I just did a video on creating destructible objects that I think could fit really nicely into this one if you want to have the player or the obstacles break when they collide. So check that out here. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome people who donated in February and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.